Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Ridgway, and we are going to be talking today about communications. Communications is a powerful tool inside of STK, uh, and it's used to create link budgets from a transmitter to a receiver and so much more. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, first, I have a uh, scenario set up, very simple. We have a uh, highly eccentric satellite, um, and it's going over a ground station somewhere on the East Coast. What we want to do is we want to calculate the link budget between the facility and the satellite. So we're going to do this simply and easy, and we're going to build up from there. First, what I want to do is I want to create a default object, a default transmitter object on this spacecraft. So what I'll do is go down and select my transmitter here. So I select transmitter and insert. Now I go to my satellite, and I use that same drop down and select receiver. Now I have a transmitter and receiver pair. Uh, the first one I'm going to call is the ISO, isotropic transmitter. I'm going to keep receiver and call this just Rx. So I'm not going to go into the properties just yet. I'm just going to show you how to create a simple link budget with some default objects. So what you want to do is right click on your transmitter, select access, and go to receiver. You don't have to use it from the transmitter to the receiver, but that's a good way. If you want to use it, I would suggest using it from transmitter to receiver always or receiver to transmitter always. It keeps your mind focused when you're looking at tons and tons of different access lines. So there is a compute button here. You can just select compute, or if you select any one of these buttons down here, it'll also compute and run some analysis. So the very first thing we want to know, what we should notice is that the link budget button is sitting right here in the reports. If I go back and select another object, like a satellite object, the link budget does not exist, does not, I can't select, I cannot click on it. That's because for link budget, you require both a transmitter and a receiver to be, gener to be in the access chain in order for that link budget to be uh, enabled. So that's where our link information data provider comes from. So let's just select it and see what happens. Okay, wow, here's a link budget. Created it for us. It's a short form version of it. It shows you our access time starting at this time here. And it has a bunch of different information about the received frequency, received isotropic power, carrier to noise, EV over n naught, and bit error rate. As a systems engineer, I like to look at these, these values here. Carrier to noise gives you the amount of carrier signal versus the noise floor. So a positive value is good. Uh, and then bit error rate is a really good uh, kind of summation of, of how good the signal is because it tells you how many errors there are in the total amount of uh, data received. So if you had a 1E minus 30, that means you have 1E30 um, bits of data being sent with only one error being received. So you're receiving a lot of data and only one error. If you had one error for every two bits sent, that means every other one could have an error in it. So that means a completely garbled signal and not good. So we like to look at bit error rate. In this case here, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not, not great, uh, but it changes. And then what you also notice is, you know, why is there another, why is there another uh, header here? You know, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Well, let's go back. Let's go see why we have that header. That's A, if you want to run the access graph. We take a look and we can say, oh, wow, there's breaks in it. Okay, that makes sense. The satellite is in orbit. Um, around this object, and if I press play, let me restart it and press play, you can see that the satellite, it does not have an access line between the, between the facility and the ground, and now it does. So there we go. An access is complete, and then it comes up again. That's what we're seeing here. But you know what would be great? Is if we could see this data on this graph. Well, there's a way to graph that data. So let's go back to the access uh, panel, select the report and graph manager, and what we want to look for inside of uh, select, you know, this one is our access for the ISO transmitter to the ISO receiver. Uh, we can go down here and select carrier to noise. Look at that. So we can see carrier to noise ratio changing over time. So essentially, we've mixed those two reports. And so you can do this with any data provider in that link budget. Uh, but carrier to noise, that's a good one to see. And it's very, um, very visual here. OK, so we just use the default objects. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do another one. Um, and we're, not going to, and we're going to just copy and paste this object here. Oops, sorry, paste it. And we're going to rename it parabolic. Okay. And we're going to name it parabolic. Because what we want to do is we actually want to create a parabolic antenna. A lot of satellite communication links, especially for geo, use a parabolic antenna. It's simple, easy, um, and powerful. So right now, you'll notice this is the properties of the transmitter object. What we want to do is select an antenna, but hey, where's the antennas? Well, that's because we're using a simple transmitter model. 
we want to have antennas, we need to go to a more complex model. So we need a complex transmitter model. There are many different types of transmitter models inside of, inside of SDK. Uh, it would take a while to go through each and every one of them. Uh, generally, simple and complex are the ones that we'll use for simple communications. But there are things like GPS, lasers, multi-beams, and as well as retransmitters and plugins. So there's a lot of different uh, models available. We're going to use complex transmitter. You can see the frequency, the modulation, and filters are the same. But what happens is it adds an additional uh, uh, property called uh, antenna. So this antenna, there are many different types of antennas. There's everything from Gaussian to hemispherical to an Intelsat one, that specific company, isotropic, uh, square horn. A lot of these are, um, are uh, simplifications of some models, and some of them are um, very useful. And then there's also external and scripting. So if you have an external antenna, antenna gain pattern, you can bring that in using uh, this option here, and you find that option. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using parabolic. Um, so let's select parabolic. You can see the design frequency, the size, all of this uh, can be modified, uh, as well as polarization. Uh, the one thing we're going to look at is orientation. Right now, this parabolic antenna is facing directly up. So zero degrees azimuth, 90 degrees elevation. So that's facing directly up as attached to the facility. It's going to be important later. OK, so what we're going to do is just select OK on this. And we have an antenna. Uh, now we have a parabolic antenna attached to facility one. So what we want to do is right click on that. And let's run access again. We're going to select the receiver. And we're going to go to the report and graph manager this time. What's great about this is SDK will create this access object. So we can actually multi-select these objects in the report and graph manager and generate a graph with both of these access accesses on there. So the report and graph manager, uh, so the, uh, the graph actually shows us both the isotropic as well as a parabolic. And Let's see what we see here. Well, actually, the parabolic's worse than the isotropic. The isotropic is just, you know, just emitting in all directions, but the parabolic is very directional. We can say, wow, why is it worse? Why is it worse? And then why is it better? Why is it better here? So let's run some little analysis. So what we want to do is just right click on somewhere in that time and we want to set animation time. Okay, this is when the isotropic antenna is worse than the parabolic antenna. If you want to get a higher resolution graph, you just update the step size and you can see it's a little bit better here. And let's take a look at what it is in 3D, because the time was set when I right-clicked on it and said set animation time. And let's look at 3D. Wow, in 3D, that satellite is directly overhead. Okay, so where is the antenna pointed? You know, I, I really don't know. You know, what's that? What's zero degrees and zero degrees azimuth and 90 degrees elevation? Well, I know what it is because I know azimuth and elevation. But if you're really not sure where your antenna is pointed, we like to use um, the volume. So what we want to do is go to 3D graphics, go to attributes, and this is of the parabolic antenna. And what we're going to do is show volume. The defaults for this one should just work, but you might actually have to use this elevation and actually do a 0 to 180 degrees to see the full antenna pattern. And if you want a higher resolution, you can also uh, decrease the step size in that resolution. So that's how many, how many um, degrees, how many points per degree you're going to see. So you're going to see one point for every one degree. So you press apply there. Once, essentially, we just added this show volume. Now, oh, look at that. What is that? Well, that's actually our antenna gain pattern for this parabolic antenna. It has a very high gain in the red, larger region, and it has a lower gain in the blue and purpler region. So it's, it's, uh, that's what we see quite a bit when we're looking at SDK communications is these gain patterns. Some of them are a little bit more complex. This is very directional and um, very you know, pointed. But here's the issue, right? You know, we, we, this is, this line connects the facility to the satellite, but it's, the antenna is not really pointed in the right direction. It's close, but it's really not pointed uh, perfectly. So how do we point the antenna to the satellite? How do we point this antenna to the satellite? Well, you might say, okay, well, we go back to the antenna properties and, and look at orientation. Oh, well, no. This only allows us to do fixed pointing. So oil angular, angles, uh, quaternions, or YPR, y'all patrol angles. So that's really not going to help us here. So what we want to do, just cancel that, is go to the facility and actually use a sensor. Sensors have a lot more capability uh, in terms of pointing, and uh, we can use that instead of pointing the uh, antenna manually. So let's go to the properties of this sensor. This sensor will just decrease the field of view, um, maybe to just five degrees. Um, and we really don't care too much. We just really want it to be the mechanism for pointing. Okay, So basic pointing of the sensor. 
you're able to do multiple different types, fixed and axes, external, based off a 3D model, that's a little bit more complicated, along any, any one vector. Uh, that's a really good one, especially if you're using a plugin or you want to do something more complicated. Uh, fixed, fixed in axes is a way to be fixed, but also have a variable axes. Uh, but the one we want to do is target it. What do we want to target? Well, we want to target the satellite. Uh, we don't necessarily need to target the re receiver because the satellite and receiver are at a very similar or the same location, depending on how you set it up. So I just like to use the parent to target the objects. Okay. So now I'll show you what it looks like as we do a side by side. And so once I press apply, you'll see this being smaller and it'll be directing directional. There we go. So now you can see that green is surrounding that other green line directly in between it. So now how do we move this sensor or this saddle, uh, this antenna to the sensor? Well, what I do is just do a cut or a copy and paste. And there we go. So now we have a parabolic antenna along the direction of that sensor and that sensor's direction is pointed towards, towards the satellite. Great. So what does that look like? How, how does access change? How does the carrier to noise change over time? So uh, what we want to do is first go to access. Okay. We want to, uh, we can either change the access or actually right click on our object and select the access. When you do that, it will automatically change this object up here. So this is the from object or for object. So again, just like we did before, we selected our uh, receiver. When you select the receiver, we get the link budget. We don't want to look at that data. We want to actually go to the report and graph manager. And again, here we go, one, two, three. And this is another reason why I like to select my transmitters first, because it says transmit to receive, transmit to receive, transmit to receive. So that gives my head a break. So I'm not looking at a receive to transmit, transmit to receive, receive to transmit, back and forth, back and forth. So try to keep your um, access objects aligned. Okay, and then again, running the carrier to noise. And look at that. So the top is the parabolic that is pointed. Right, so parabolic one, or you can even call it parabolic pointing, is very high. That carrier to noise is very high. It's also a lot higher than isotropic because parabolic dishes are pointed. They're directional. They actually push all of the signal, uh, or most of the signal, into that, that normal beam. And then the one parabolic antenna that is not pointed, it's very low carrier to noise. And even towards where that isotropic is beaten by the parabolic antenna that's unpointed, if you actually point your parabolic dish, it's a lot higher. So that was a very quick introduction to SDK communications. I wanted you to be able to create a transmitter, create a receiver, run access, and make some changes in order to improve your overall links. There's a lot more that you can do with SDK communications. I implore you to do SDK communications training. Uh, we'll provide links in the comments or links in the description, and we'll be able to provide more and more content um, to you. If you have any other additional questions, please reach out to our LSAS staff. We can provide any technical resources or support as needed. Thank you very much. Have a great day.